James Dobson is the founder of Focus on the Family, and he is still focusing on the trans-inclusive bathroom policies of some cities and states around the country, and Target in particular. He has come up with perhaps the most ridiculous reason to continue this fight against inclusivity. Take a listen. Do not degrade your daughters by making them a prostitute or the land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Uh, that, uh, that comes right to the heart of this. It sort of feels like that's where we are. We're taking our little vulnerable kids and we're saying in the name of political correctness, uh, here are our children, do with them what you want. And I'm here to say that I'm going to fight that as long as I have breath in my body. And I want to tell you something else. As a man, I not only care about my daughter and I care about uh, little girls across the country. I care about Shirley. I don't want Shirley being in a bathroom where some grungy guy comes in there and zips down his zipper and does things that she will remember the rest of her life. I, I mean, where is manhood that we don't stand up and defend our own families? And I think we're going to be responsible before the Lord if we don't do it. Now, I played the audio because, of course, it's important that you actually hear him say it, but I almost wish that I had just done the text because almost every word of that is absolute stupidity. First of all, you're not prostituting your daughters, even if, let's say hypothetically, let's give him all the benefit of the doubt. They go in a bathroom and they are sexually assaulted by someone. They're not prostitutes in that case, you idiotic, immoral jackass. They will be victims of a crime in that case. They don't become prostitutes, and you're not a pimp if something bad happens to a person, whether from a trans person doing it or a straight person doing it. We talked uh, today on The Young Turks about the, uh, the leader of one of the Minuteman groups who was found to have been molesting a child. Are you focusing on the family of that guy or the families of the Minutemen to protect the kids from Minutemen? No, you're focused on the trans uh, activists and the trans policy, of course. And so he goes on to say, I'm not going to play the full video and everything, or the full audio, I should say, but he talks about how it's time for men of courage to stand up against this. That we're simply allowing trans people to use the bathroom that they are more comfortable with because of political correctness. Because, of course, that is the motivation for absolutely everything that is done that you disagree with. Which makes things very, very simple for you. It certainly takes off some of the mental burden. If you don't have to actually explain why a policy is wrong, you can simply label it as politically correct, and then you m go along your merry way down the road to Samara or wherever he's going. And so, in this case, you can't allow trans people to use a bathroom because then something bad, bad could happen to your children. We will have taken away all of the laws that stop sexual assault and molestation from happening in bathrooms. Except, of course, that that is absolutely ludicrous because those laws remain on the books. Right now, it is illegal to rape someone in a bathroom. Right now, by the way, it's possible to rape someone in a bathroom. Neither of those two things will change if we allow trans people to use the bathroom that they identify with, that goes along with the gender that they identify with. It will still be illegal for them to molest people, or for straight people to molest people, or for whoever to molest people, and it will still be possible. Whatever danger you imagine to be there will still remain. I say it's an imaginary danger, these things don't actually happen. If anybody is going to be assaulted in a bathroom, historically it tends to be trans people being attacked by non-trans people. But it's still possible. None of that changes. The law doesn't change. It doesn't suddenly become okay to molest people. You can't rape people if you want to. You'll defend rapists, by the way. You can't actually do that. And for some reason, they don't... They don't have to actually explain why the Bible verse that they're quoting explains their position because they only bring other Christian crazy people on to debate them or to go along with them. And that's one of the most frustrating things about keeping up with these sorts of shows. There's no intellectual curiosity you understand that. That's one of the reasons they get to the point in their life that they're actually at. But there's also no questioning of the bubble, the biblical bubble that they live in. 
But thankfully, that bubble is getting smaller and smaller over time, less influential over time. More and more people probably aren't even familiar with who James Dobson actually is. And that is a good thing, because that is a necessary element in the road towards freedom, the road towards inclusivity, the road towards everyone being treated with the sort of human decency that I believe they should have, that I would argue Jesus wants them to have. The only person who doesn't want that is James Dobson and those of his ilk.